welcome back to the channel y'all into the great outdoors we're here at our bushcraft hunting camp down by the river in the woods and I, you know I was going through some old relics the other day and I broke out my old Ithaca 22 this is my first ever rifle a neighbor friend gave it to me it's an extremely safe extremely simple operating uh, rifle that is just great it's a great starter rifle and I got it out, I cleaned it up, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to take this to, to, the, to the little bushcraft camp out in the woods, because this would be a perfect addition. I don't know how many squirrels this thing has under, under its belt. I used to hunt squirrels on my grandma's farm, and um, it's just a very simple little iron sight uh, lever action rifle, and I love it. So it is time to do some squirrel hunting here at the bushcraft camp. We've got uh, a fire going. I've heard some squirrels barking, um, so we're just gonna kind of, kind of do a little walk and do a little listening here, and see if we can hear anything, and then locate one, and then take it back, put it on the fire. Well, first of all, let me show you how the camp turned out. The tarp held up great with the rain. I really like this tarp. That water just beads off of it. Uh, it did pull up a little bit. There was a little bit of thunder. I never had any lightning that I could see. The hammock, the hammock did really good. I like this bug net that comes with the hammock. You can take it off, but uh, I didn't have any bugs last night, of course, because it was probably in the low 40s, maybe high 30s, because I got a little chilled. I slept with my camera gear and, uh, you know, old Mr. Pew Pew right there, right under me. So I have my 20 degree bag right here, and then I put a wool blanket under that. Wool blanket there, and then I put my pad, my sleeping pad, up under there. And I had to do that because that wind was carrying under here, and it was just, it was hitting my, my rear end, and I was just not having it. It was in the 40s with a, with a wind, and my tarp is flown, which means it's completely off the ground, so there was definitely a breeze coming in. The heat off the fire helped for the first two and a half hours or so. I would get these waves of heat that would come up under that awning and just convect over me, and it was really nice. And then when that wore down, uh, you know, I had, to, I had to break out that sleeping pad. Otherwise, I wouldn't have got any sleep. And as I was getting ready to go to bed, just sitting here eating my dinner and stuff, scanning with the thermals, waiting to see like what is coming out here, what is coming out. And it was just stuff wandering around the whole time. I mean, hearing stuff all around me uh, from raccoon, raccoons, possums, uh, those uh, little ringtail cat things. I'm pretty sure there was a porcupine as well that was up here. I was not brave enough to go explore it. And then we had the hogs, and then we have foxes and coyotes. And uh, the hogs were just too much, y'all. The hogs were just insane. I had to take another one out that was just blatantly chewing right in front of me while I was eating my dinner. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a squirrel in our midst. I can hear it barking back there. We have a fire. We're hungry. Let's go get some squirrel. Holy cow, look at this outcropping right here, guys. Wow, now this is 100% <laughs> livable cave right here. It's huge, absolutely huge. 
could see another burrow right there from a hog. That sort of looks like an arrowhead. Okay, squirrel located. It's right up in this tree. All right, little buddy. You're mine. Oh my goodness. It's as simple as that, y'all. Lever out shell pops out and it's just one at a time so we'll skin it up and that's our lunch pretty sweet little rifle i'm glad i cleaned it up and just broke it out again still shoots great so we got our squirrel right here uh it's probably going to be pretty chewy because squirrel meat is usually chewy. I've got some olive oil, I've got some spices. It's not gonna be like we're just primitive cooking this thing on a stick. It's gonna be decent. They're, they're just always chewy, unless you pressure cook them or you let them sit um, over ice for a few days or maybe even age them. I never aged a squirrel. <laughs> it's usually just kind of like get it and go for me, but maybe I should. So anyways, nice little male squirrel. Let's skin it up and let's get it on the fire. I don't clean squirrel that often, but if I remember right, the way I did it last time, we just go around the cuffs of all the, uh, you know, all the arms, just like you would on a, on a deer. We'll make sure we do that good on the leg here. Those legs are tasty. Just kind of using this little old branch knob just to lay them across and just have a little little pull, a little leverage when I'm making these cuts. It always helps to have tight skin when you're making them. And I'm gonna skin this squirrel right in the middle and then we should be able to just pull the two halves apart. Now I've kinda got it under the skin where I can pull, start pulling these apart. The elbows are a little tricky. <sighs> But this one's coming out. Pull really hard. <sighs> you can see one of his feet just popped out right there. And then the other one we can just cut. That's all the meat we're really gonna need. So we got our squirrel skinned in half. Now all we gotta do is just clean out the entrails and stuff. I won't show that, but the skinning part is, um, it's pretty easy. You know, on a fresh squirrel, you make that cut down the center, just pull. And then, um, you know, obviously cut the, uh, cut the dog it off and all that. But it's, for me, I think it's the easiest way and you don't get a ton of hair on it. Time for that spice. Cosmo SPG. Don't leave home without it, man. Salt, pepper, and garlic. And I've even got some olive oil. Olive oil is actually really useful for your, um, for your blades as well. Your metals to prevent them from rusting. A lot of steels, uh, carbon steels, you have to do that anyways. Um, this is the knife that I, I need to use. So uh, I actually carry olive oil with me and I use it on my blades at home so I can use them for cooking as well and not just you know bushcraft type stuff. Uh, even on my axe I find that um, olive oil, um, those types of oils, natural oils work really well with that. So. I'm just gonna put a little dabble do down the back here. Rub that in. Rub that in to the tendies right there. Get those arms. If you guys watched the last video, I suspended uh, this grate over the coals, or over the fire really. Turned out to be a bad idea. <laughs> I dropped half my food. I dropped pretty much all my food in the fire. So we're not going to be doing that today. We're going to use a different method. We're just going to be using the coals and kind of sliding them over to our grate. Much safer operation here. 
I'll cover this back side. Pepper that back side. Get it? Ooh, got those nice garlic chunks in there. For a squirrel that was expired uh, about you know 45 minutes ago, I, I know this is going to be chewy, uh, but it's seasoned really nicely. So let's see how good a fresh squirrel tastes in the wild. It, it's always better when you're out in the outdoors, I promise you. I'm going to try to take some of these coals, scoot them up under here. We'll just stick our squirrel right on top. I think it might be time for a flip. That's what we're working with here. It, uh, it's feeling very hard, just like a squirrel is. She gonna be crunchy. It's a he, actually. He gonna be crunchy. Maybe I should have boiled it first. I've never tried that. Just heard another squirrel back there. Boil it, get the meat soft, and then do like a sear on it, but it's too late now. It's gonna be like eating rocks. We are looking extra crispy. I don't think there's any amount of Chick-fil-A sauce that, that is gonna save this. You know, it's not looking quite as bad as I was thinking. Get me an arm piece. We'll throw it back on that midsection looks a little underdone there it is steamy fresh little protein of the woods mm. a bone got me on that first try shoulder blade Mm. It's actually really good. That squirrel is not very tough. Wow. That Cosmo SPG. Use it on everything at home. And I got a couple extra containers of it. Not containers, but little bottles of it just to carry with me for doing stuff like this. Truck camping and whatnot. Wow. Whew. That is just, mm. Really gave it a lot of good flavor. Not nearly as chewy as I was expecting. Especially on like this arm piece right here. It's not bad at all. We got some good squirrels out here. All right, let's get us a leg here. Juicy leg. Mmm. Yeah. Couple of hairs on it. We'll remove. Daggum near impossible to you know, clean a squirrel and not get a couple of hairs on it. Steamy. Mmm. Again, not too chewy. Those chunks of garlic in there make all the difference in the world. Oh man, if I had some biscuits and gravy right here, hmm, I'd be hunting for more squirrels all day. Y'all, it felt good to go down memory lane, break out the old vintage Ithaca, and walk around and look for some squirrels. My dad, when I was little, we used to go to um, his farm, his family farm, and I would walk around with that little 22, and I would shoot squirrels and I got pretty decent at it. He told me to take it easy. He taught me an important lesson. He said, son, you know, everything that you, you shoot, you should eat. 
he had known that I had shot a raccoon and uh, he, ma he made me go back, get that raccoon that I'd got that morning, take it back and he helped me cook it. And uh, I mean, what a great dad, he even took a bite. And it wasn't good, it was greasy, uh, but it just taught me an important lesson. Really the only exception to that I think is hogs. We just have so many of them we can't control, but you know, you just don't want to go around shooting every squirrel you see. Just felt good to get one, bring it back, cook it up, and uh, just go down memory lane with, with the old lever action, my first rifle ever. It's pretty awesome. Hmm, well, now that one had some bark on it. Go ahead and smash that like button for breaking out vintage classics. Staying out here in the great outdoors, camping, going and getting ourselves some sustenance. It's just the basics of life, man. It's just good. It just feels good. So go ahead and smash it. And if you want to stay tuned for more outdoor action, you know what to do. Subscribe here to the channel. Help me reach that million subscriber mark, y'all. Thanks for being here, y'all. Stay safe in the outdoors. God bless. I'll see you soon.